Hello and welcome to the Pollen Super Bowl. Penelope, what's up? Today's game will pit Pollen fans' sanity against the cast and crew of Bridgerton Season 3. I'm your fill-in host, Lecky, and I'm completely alone because the rest of the pod has somehow managed to get themselves benched on this most sacred day. Uh, maybe karma for rooting for the biscuit cushion. In the meantime, I'm here, alone. It is 6 in the morning in California, and I am excited to see what is in store for us today. <laughs> are freezing. Veg uh, has just joined. Yes, and straight hot off the press, it seems there has been in the long-standing tradition of leaks another leak. It just <laughs> never occurred to me that you, of all people, could be so cruel. Sorry, I don't know why I'm cheering. We're just very excited. <laughs> hello, hello everyone. It's during the, this, the scene, oh the lesson. <gasps> that neck. <laughs> oh, it's oh, my God. Bring on the bugs. <laughs> Oh my god, what are you screaming for? What are you screaming about? I can't see anything. Fucking prude, I bitch! <gasps> I'm so excited. I'm out. Out. This kid stop. The first two minutes! Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Okay, everyone in quiet. <gasps> <laughs> he wrote her! Lucky he wrote! She didn't respond! <laughs> Okay, so Beans is unwell. And he's fond of pen. You know what? I'd be fond of pen. I am fond of pen. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to What a Barb, the same episode, but just a little bit later. We're all together now. How exciting. Chaos, how are we? One word, how are you feeling? Overwhelmed. <laughs> Beans, you're not doing well. So last time, basically what happens is anytime we get promo, there has to be a blood sacrifice, okay? So mm -hmm. Veg, your knee has basically been gouged out. Correct. Beans, today you are the victim of the Bridgerton sacrifice. Yes. You've been struck down in your prime. It's very sad, yeah. but we're grateful nonetheless. Yeah. So much the blood sacrifice that I will be bleeding for four to five days. This is why you have so much, <laughs> this is why you have so much content today. <laughs> you were also like throwing up yeah. right as we got something... What was it? It was Debling. It was Debling. That's who it was. Debling emerged on our screens for the first time as something else emerged from Beans, but it's been a day. <laughs> so all those times that Beans have joked about that she's going to shit herself and throw up. I mean, she actually did. <laughs> yeah. God. <laughs> Luckily, she wasn't actually on the Zoom at that time. No. Mm -hmm. I almost didn't participate because I was feeling violently ill. It just came out of nowhere. <laughs> and then I went to the bathroom and I was like, oh... I'm on my period. <laughs> <laughs> Mystery sold. And then the sight of Deblin made you miraculously feel at least better oh, enough yeah. to hop on the call. Let me just say, I've been doing several victory laps these past few weeks, and they haven't <laughs> ended. They have not ended. <laughs> well, so as you just heard from earlier, uh, that was our in-the-moment reaction to the live stream. We did record the whole thing, but 99% of it is completely unusable. But just know yeah. that we were having the time of our little lives, um, mm -hmm. and apologies for the audio in that because it was terrible. So in this next little part of the episode, this episode today is really just our in-the-moment reactions. It's not the time for analysis. It's not the time for deep dives. Be mostly because we're too tired and don't have time to edit it. So today, we will just be giving our initial reactions, our gut thoughts, and then later in another episode, we'll really dig into the meat of it all. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about all the different side plots. We'll dig into the characters like Will and Alice, who we're so excited about, people like Benedict, Eloise, Lady Danbury. We truly got so many crumbs today. Mm -hmm. But our priority, I mean, it's Valentine's Day. We're a pollen podcast. Obviously, our main focus are going to be our beloved two. So in the interest of our sanity and getting some kind of episode out to you, that's what our focus is just going to be. The stills and the new clip, of course. And again, this is more our initial thoughts and ideas that are popping into our heads. We'll have more theories, breakdowns, spirals later on. That being said, knowing us, there'll probably be some analysis. <laughs> I'm just saying. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is me. It's just there's there's so much content that it's like we definitely need a like a full episode to talk about all yeah. of those mm -hmm. pictures and everything. Or three. And also, if everyone sounds a bit scared in this episode, it's because I sent a really mean message to the chat before. Like, do not talk over each other. It's already 11, 11 o'clock. Editing is good. I've just heard that pop from you, Veg. That's going to be a bitch to edit out. <laughs> <laughs> So I've scared them into submission. So if everyone seems to choose, but what's happening? No, no. I moved into my mind. She she went <laughs> like that, and when she did that, I could see the sound waves in my like. When I think of you guys, I see the sound waves. That's how much editing we do. Hello, Dale. Listeners, <laughs> Veg is so scared now. She has her, her hand over her mouth, <laughs> trying to stop herself from breathing. So this will be great. So 
To recap today, forget crumbs, we had a whole bloody bakery. Um, mm-hmm. We had a full hour-ish long panel with endless crumbs about endless mm-hmm. people. Mm-hmm. We have eight new stills, five of which <laughs> featured Penn and or mm. Colin. And then, do you know what we did bloody have? The episode title. I know, Shocking. I screamed. Shocking. <gasps> that completely took me by surprise. We will get into that in a second, but like, they, she just threw them at us. I thought yeah, that was going to come yeah. weeks and weeks later. But, Lecky, you know your task by now. We've got eight stills. The eternal question that I will always ask you, what about the metadata? Were you able to figure out which episodes the stills are all from? Congratulations, Paul and fans. We know the episodes these stills are from. So episode one, <laughs> all of the Featherington couples, plus a miserable little pen. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so we have Philippa and Mr. Finch and Prudence and her lovely Mr. Dankworth standing in what appears to be like a garden or a park. Beans is pumping the air. We will figure out what it is. We're going to have another hedge discourse to figure out where this <laughs> yeah. is. Also, in episode one we have the still of Violet and Francesca who are sitting in the Bridgerton drawing room and then we also have the Mondriches in front of a dark blue carriage Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in episode two we have that lovely scene of Penelope tending to Colin's bandage hand sorry Um, as well as Eloise and the Bridgertons arriving at a ball which ball could it be and Queen Charlotte and her entourage sitting kind of moodily in the corner somewhere (laughs) in episode three we have our first glimpse of Lord Debling with Penelope and in episode six we have a very undressed colin and benedict at will's bar oh my gosh i'm just processing all of this i'm like it's so much stuff we're so used to like going over like everything with like a fine tooth comb looking for tiny tiny crumbs now we have Mm -hmm. so much material to do that with it's Mm -hmm. gonna be overwhelming we have two minutes we have two minutes of Penn and Colin, basically. Yeah. That's, that's more than I got in, like, the first season ever. <laughs> I think I once worked it out, and in season one, they had, like, an insane average conversation time of about nine seconds or something yeah. ridiculously yeah. stupid. Well, oh. firstly, then, to kick things off, shall we have a quick look at those episode titles? As I say, these completely caught us by surprise. So we're not going to fully go into, like, our theories, on the episode mm-hmm. titles yet because that's a whole of the discussion but yeah. what I want is maybe your first impressions anything that you just immediately associate with the titles and just mm-hmm. things like that and like I say we will break it down and try and like construct a twisted narrative um, from it yeah. as, um, as we go so episode one we already knew was out of the shadows yeah. episode yeah. two however is how bright the moon I've tried to figure out if that's a quote from something I don't know if it is. I don't know. It's definitely for the, moon the ball. lunar ball. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. So this is definitely where Osley takes place. And as we've seen, that's like a moon phases ball. I'm wondering if at the end of the episode, because usually the, the title represents the last like three minutes of the episode, kind of. Mm-hmm. I wonder if that's when mm-hmm. Devlin's going to show up. <gasps> and he just appears. Mm-hmm. And then episode three. So yeah, I think episode two, pretty straightforward. But again, it's connotations with light. And something mm-hmm. and something being illuminated. Mm-hmm. Episode yeah. three is forces of nature. Lucky, do you have any th- any ideas on this one? I am thinking forces of nature. Rain, Rain. is a force of nature. <laughs> I want my Barclay Square scene now. <laughs> yeah, well, I think it is a reference to that, but it's also, you know, Pollen kind of being, you know, inevitably drawn toward each other. Mm-hmm. Oh. Yeah. Because episode three is where it's all going to start unraveling, right? And it's mm-hmm. like those things, especially on Penn's side, no matter how you feel logically. Yeah. yeah. You know, trying to see Debling as the right option for her. Some things yeah. are just too strong. Mm-hmm. Which takes us to episode four, Old Friends, which I, uh, I hear that in a very... Colin losing his fucking sanity kind of way Mm -hmm. and being like you good old friends but also I think that can transgress storylines as well so that can be like Eloise it can be Queen Charlotte and Lady Danbury it can be Violet and Lady Danbury Mm -hmm. this is going to be the end of part one it's a real breaking point and I think this is when he's finally going to snap and it's like an ironic like old friends or as you put it Colin's final brain cell snapping (laughs) (laughs) any other thoughts on old friends I've really I've scared them all. I keep glaring at them. <laughs> I don't want to talk. I have a joke that I intended on making right at the start and I haven't said it yet. Do you, would you like to say it, Veg? Okay. Remember right at the start when Ob said, let's get into the meat of things. I wanted to say, or vegetarian alternative. <laughs> <laughs> well, absolutely. Vegetarian options are available. <laughs> Episode five is TikTok. Like the clock, um, as Jess said. But this, to me, 
it's very much like time running out for Colin. Like Mm -hmm, you need to move fast. I think this is when he's struggling to convince her. But I also feel like this could be like the bounty deadline really like hammering down and the pressure. I want episode five to be like awful for everyone. Mm -hmm. Angst, angst, angst. I do think the series is quite a lot about time though, you know, like different, we've heard from about different timelines and stuff and about running out Mm -hmm. of time, taking too much time to get on with things. Yeah. But Mm -hmm. talking of time, it's time to go to our beloved Mirasine. Romancing Mr. Bridgerton, I think... I can't remember who guessed episode six, but one of us definitely guessed. One of us. I think mm. you called it thoroughly, Romancing Mr. Bridgerton. Yeah. Um, but this is our mm. book title episode. Yeah, sexy episode. Mm. Yeah, I think this is the mirror scene episode. And mm-hmm. then judging by the still re-received, I think it's also a bachelor party episode. Mm-hmm. And hopefully uh, Colin sneaks out and goes to see Penn. <laughs> And episode seven then becomes joining of hands. <gasps> Marriage. Do we think it's that literal? I mean, that's kind of all it could be, right? It has to be. Surely. Yeah. Maybe it's the joining of Penn's hands as she finally gets cuffed and carted off oh, to shit. jail and burnt at the stake. We can only but hope. But it does feel quite joyful, but then like, I remember it is episode seven and that's normally quite like an angsty episode, so maybe not. Well, episodes, yeah, episode seven, season two was Harmony, which was a theme but ended up being like inverted about like the breaking of harmony and them in a really difficult position i was going to say it could also represent unity mm-hmm. not just eloise maybe partnering with Penn mm-hmm. again to maybe deal with the whole blackmail plot maybe the bridgertons kind of supporting her yes, joining forces yes. with her to kind of mm-hmm. tackle that mm-hmm, mm-hmm. reaching out and uh banding together which leads us episode eight our season finale into the light <laughs> i swear to god I feel like Veg at one point guessed that that would be the title. I have a soundbite in my head of Veg being like, out of the shadows and into the light. I don't know if she did or not, if I've hallucinated that. Sure, I'll claim that (laughs) one. But I was reminded of something that Nicola shared back in February 2022, when, no, February 2023, when they were finishing up filming. She shared a song called True Love Will Find You In The End by Daniel Johnston. And the lyrics said, but how can you recognise it if you don't step out into the light? Don't be sad, I know you will. Don't give up until true love will find you in the end. So Hmm. I feel like that was a little hint from Nicola all the way back then. Also, Penn as Lady Whistledown, you know, revealing herself into the light off the page. Well, that's the other thing. So it is the continuation of Out of the Shadows into the light, that Mm -hmm. character progression for both of them, but also for everyone else in the ton as well, like the different stories that we're going to have. But like you say, it's about Lady Whistledown, whether that's her coming into the light as in accepting and reconciling the the two parts of her identity together Mm -hmm. it doesn't necessarily have to be like a public exposing like everyone finds out yeah so i want from all of you which episode title do you like the most are you intrigued by the most which one are you drawn to initially three forces of nature Mm. Mm -hmm. you just want episode three that's why (laughs) yeah i really want the park three square scene beans which episode title old friends oh that's a good one you know that's a good one Mm -hmm. veg so i'm already intrigued by episode two and the title definitely adds to the intrigue but at the end of the day i'm an old school romantic and joining of hands is just Oh. oh, I'm going to go TikTok because I think it's funny the idea that, of him panicking. <laughs> Sorry. Dear Lord. Nice support that view. We've got eight different stills. We'll touch on them all here now. We'll dig into them more at the weekend, I think. But yeah, any like first initial impressions? So we'll go in chronological order by episode. But episode mm-hmm. one, the first photo we have are the Mondriches. So again, we'll discuss Will later in more detail. But did I hear right? Are they getting a title? Yeah. Sounds like it. Yeah. They said they have a new title. Mm-hmm. But we've all been really interested in the role that Will was going to play in the season. But I think what we're mm-hmm. learning about all these different subplots is that they're really taking some of them in a direction that it's really surprising to us all so yeah. although we wanted mm-hmm. will and alice to have a more prominent role i don't think we expected that they suddenly be titled yeah not at all it would be interesting if, if it was an inheritance mm-hmm. and i'm wondering if it's on the side of alice because in the photo you can mm-hmm. i'm not going to dive too much into it <laughs> but you can see she's in front so it seems more mm-hmm. like she's the one who's heading in first. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I wonder if it's related to maybe her family, and which we'll get more of a yeah. backstory about Alice, which would be so interesting. It would be great. And they look very apprehensive mm-hmm. in the image as well. And they're looking, it looks like they've pulled up to a house or something. So I wonder if it's like a, an old relative who's like dying or maybe they just pulled up somewhere and they have to inherit it all. Is that a Bridgerton blue carriage though? Like you were talking about this earlier, weren't we? The thing is, it looks like it in terms of it's blue for sure, but the curtains aren't the same. So the Bridgerton carriages mm. have like yellow gold curtains. Yeah. And these are definitely like 
blue. Mm. Maybe they repurposed yeah. Colin's carriage and then just redressed the curtains. Yeah. And then gave the footmen a more, uh, the footmen have more like of a blue tone livery. Mm -hmm. But I was thinking, if you look at the footman in the corner there, he's wearing blue and yellow. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. So I wonder if that's just kind of like a sign of like how close he becomes to Colin. Penelope and Colin. And, yeah. yeah. Maybe. Maybe so. What struck me here is they're all very much like different outfits like them sort of mm. feeling their way through things mm. mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like trying to figure their way out in, in this new role that they're taking yeah then at some point in episode one we have violet and francesca together mm -hmm. not too much we can say about this still at the moment lucky you did notice what francesca's holding though sheet music yep it's got sheet music in her hand very early scene Probably just the scene of Violet giving her advice. Mm -hmm. Fran's kind of looking at her with like, I don't know, like a slight skepticism or something, would you say? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I was just like, you carry on, mum. But then, Beans. My gosh. <laughs> now, we're still <laughs> reeling from... I suppose Nick's comment the other day makes a little bit more sense now. She must have known this was coming out, so it wasn't going to be too much of a problem to yeah. leak the brother-in-law. Can we talk Beans. about this moment on the stream really quick? So when we were all eventually together, all mm -hmm. of us were at different times. All yeah, of there's us. huge time delays. The whole thing. I was ahead of all of them. I don't know <laughs> even know how that happened because I came in <laughs> later. I start screaming, guttural screams when this picture came up, and they said, "Why are you screaming? What's going on? What's happening?" <laughs> And I, like, couldn't verbalize it because I was so happy. I think I eventually got a prudank out. But, like, they're like, oh, my God. It was so, like, everybody was so, like, what the fuck's going on? <laughs> because what we have here from episode one, no less, we have that lineup where we have the two couples and Penelope, but I don't think we ever expected Prudank to be a thing by episode one. Mm -hmm. No. 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 But lucky, as we say, we've recorded our block four crumbs. Yeah, yeah. And what was interesting about block four when they were filming episode one? When Penelope and Portia return to the town, there was a scene of them mm -hmm. pulling up to the exterior of the Featherington house and getting out of their carriage. Prudence wasn't with them, yeah. which combined with this picture makes me think that maybe Prudence is already married in episode one one i don't know if she marries in episode one but i think she might already be married and that might be why she didn't return to the town with portia and pen yeah i think so yeah although can anyone see a ring on her fingers but does philippa ever wear a ring no i feel like that's rare oh that's mm. a good point point. and i think the energy of dankworth is very much like it's almost like they've made it a comedy relationship where he's like the suffering husband kind of thing or like the the fun like the fun husband and she's sort of maybe bosses him around and he's just smiley sunshine like a golden retriever yeah, yeah. he's giving me golden retriever mm -hmm. vibes a hundred percent bessie said in the shondaland article that i think she likes to be able to boss someone around <laughs> oh well, there you go mm -hmm. and she has this very like stern expression like honey we're going over here kind of yeah, thing sure. you know mr finch mr cheeseman i noticed this because i was like zooming in oh my god i'm obsessed he is like fondling <laughs> <laughs> fondling philippa's um we'll finish that sentence quickly parasol parasol <laughs> yeah <laughs> and if you notice between her arm he's like hugging her on Aww. the side he seems like such a supportive husband i love that penelope is supported by happy couples and i just want to like photoshop colin right next to it well if you notice prudence and philippa are standing very close together mm -hmm. and pen is like a huge gap between them i think it's yeah. like i mean i'm reading too deep into it but of course this is a podcast for it mm -hmm. it obviously goes to show that you know philippa and uh prudence are very close mm -hmm. and then pen is not as close to them yeah she's always been the outsider yeah exactly it's just like there's a perfect gap where i just want to like draw a little collar in because can you imagine the lineup <laughs> that we're eventually going to end up with like, three golden retriever husbands oh. <laughs> i know Love it. <laughs> It's so cute. She's such like the perfect height to like have her in the middle and then call it in mm. the background because he's so mm. tall. Oh, baby girl. And we'll delve more into our costume analysis at the weekend. Veg, our fashion correspondent, you've had a busy old week. You're going to break it down for us. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. But Lecky, this dress is somewhat familiar, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we covered this in our What a Pirate episode, but we suspected that this was the same dress from season one that we see um, Penelope wearing in one of the leaks from block one. We thought it was a season one dress mm -hmm. that she was re-wearing. 
here it is in episode one. <laughs> here it is in all its glory, mm-hmm. all its glory. She was like outside Bridgerton House and she was kind of like looking to the side. Yeah. A fan who was watching the filming said she thinks there was a scene with Eloise and potentially Colin. Mm-hmm. So she might have earlier on had a run in with Eloise. That's what I'm thinking, yeah. Oh. <laughs> And in terms of the Featheringtons, we did get some interesting little tidbits about them. As you say, Bessie um, was interviewed by Shondaland and she says that she likes to be able to boss someone around. And she says that now that Philippa married last season, Prudence lost her in a way and she's sort of losing Penelope because Penelope is getting stronger and more vocal. And I thought that was interesting, the idea that Prudence feels like she's losing some aspect of Penelope. Mm -hmm. And we've talked about the Featheringtons and they've never been like, (sighs) the two of them, as you say, Beans, have been close, the old two. And then they have always ostracised Pen. There's only been tiny little moments where there's some sense of affection. Mm Mm-hmm. But in the live stream, Jess said that in families, everyone has their roles. And when someone steps out of their role, it can cause chaos within a family. And she says Penn is definitely stepping out of her role this year, sort of foreshadowing what we heard towards Christmas, where Penn's actions was going to disturb the family dynamic and really turn it on its head and throw them all. Mm -hmm. And in terms of Portia's reaction, Jess promised that there will be drama, being to be thrilled to hear as (laughs) as Portia tries to deal with Penelope's disturbance to their family dynamic. Hell yeah. But a quote from Shonda, which I thought was really interesting about the Featheringtons Shonda added to Jess's quote about there being drama in the family Shonda said and what it does to the sisters I love that story actually I think it's very moving it's hilarious but then it's very moving so there's something within the sister storyline which we'll delve into where Penn's shaking up of her status within her family and society yeah is going to impact the sisters but in a moving way Mm -hmm. and I don't think we've ever really considered that the bond between the sisters would be explored in that type Mm. of sense of affection underpinning it I think I did in our last episode because I said it's going to be all about relationships Mm -hmm. and I think I mentioned that besides Portia, it'll be interesting to see how it then affects her and her sisters as well. Mm -hmm. So I don't think we've considered it as heavily before. I think we've always been more interested to see her relationship with Mm -hmm. Portia, Mm -hmm. mostly because I think that Prudence and Philippa weren't as on the screens and in front of us you know and so now it's becoming a reality that no they're gonna be there more because this is also their story as well i'm gonna close my hello to your dogs (laughs) yeah hello to beans dog here's a thought when we usually see philippa and prudence on screen together they're kind of usually united against penelope i'm thinking of like that scene in um the last episode of season two where portia is announcing the ball and like her two sisters are kind of playfully sitting on the the sofa together Mm. and penelope is very removed from them. So I wonder if somehow Penelope's search for a husband and her newfound confidence, if that somehow creates a closer bond with her sisters. Maybe. I wonder if she recognizes that the love in their relationships or something like that is something mm-hmm. that she wants too. But that's interesting because they have always been more antagonistic, but within her family, Penelope has always bitten her tongue or she's expressed her frustration through short quips that have been very like muttered and it's a case of maybe if she reveals more of herself maybe she is more of herself there's something within that that she can then connect to her sisters over if they see a bit more openness from her maybe maybe they will pressure her to marry for love Mm -hmm. because they both have love matches yeah and that's not really a possibility they've had in their life Mm. oh my god you guys are gonna make me cry i'm already on my period (laughs) (laughs) penelope is so determined to just find a match that suits her and her plans as Lady Whistledown. Mm -hmm. She's not thinking about love. So if it's her sisters who both have these loving matches, realize Mm -hmm. that they don't want that for Penelope, even though they've never been close and tried to push her to go for Colin and to accept Mm -hmm. his feelings, that could be really sweet. Okay, not to dispute the great gospel of Prudank, but we don't know that Prudence married for love, right? We know that he's cute and a nice guy based on the smile. It could have been like a Porsche situation. Marriage of convenience. Yeah. It just sounds like they're so well matched, I think. True. In terms of their personality. But could they have been matched? It might be that their dynamic is she's a bit more brusque and like commands him around, but he quite likes it. Yeah. And he like Mm. goes along with it. They could play the whole, we don't know if Prudence actually likes him, Mm. but she just married him because, you know, she's been unsuccessful in the marriage mart. So she's, you know, like I've said, brusque and like bossing him around and stuff. But then they have maybe a beat in the later season when everybody's like in love and everything. And she's like, you know, she shows her appreciation in like a quiet moment between them you know yeah like maybe they married so she could have him on her arm and be like i'm married now but then she's actually 
She actually falls more and more in love with him and it's really sweet. Right, yeah. Yeah, like there's a moment where Dankworth does something for her or makes like a gesture that's like so sweet and touching yeah. and she hadn't realized he'd been paying like such close attention to her mm. that even she is like, yeah. oh, I kind of love him. I don't like just bossing him around. I really love him, <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That would be so cute. The last thing I'll say on the topic of the Featheringtons is when we're discussing this new relationship that they're all going to have, I think it's still important to recognise that it has been a damaging relationship to Penelope throughout her life. I don't think that's something that you can just brush over Mm -hmm. and make it into Mm -hmm. a comedic beat. I think that needs to play at it and be... And it's one of those things that as you grow up and as you grow up with your siblings and you like reflect on the lives that you've had and the upbringings you've had, you have complicated relationships, don't you? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, talking about complicated relationships, let's go slice a boy's hand open, shall we? Because <laughs> oh episode gosh. two, pen, bandage in Colin's hand. My, my, mm-hmm. my. Now, we knew the boy was going to cut his hand open. Yeah. Even he's given a blood sacrifice to the British and gods. <laughs> we thank you, Colin, for your contribution. Yeah. yeah, but he won't be bleeding for four to five days. <laughs> he better not be. <laughs> oh, bless him. But So we were trying to pin down the timeline of the cut and we're still working on it behind the scenes but we knew that he cut his hand before the Ostley ball and we had the moment in the drawing room the other day but now we have the actual moment they're kind of crouched down on the ground which is such an interesting like positioning for them both mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. which good which is good because Equal the level. crouch brings them down on eye level yep. yes is this what they're going to do all season <laughs> they're always going to be like crouching down or on different stairs and stuff so theories about this because we can assume this leads directly on from the drawing room scene veg you'll be the first one to note that she's wearing the same costume they're both um in that same moment well they're both um at that same Mm -hmm. day yeah. Lucky, there have been some theories about where this scene takes place, haven't there? Yeah, some people think this might be Colin's bedroom. Mm-hmm. Well done to oh the editor who pointed that one out. I am fully, committedly, dedicatedly on board the this is Colin's bedroom train. Lucky <laughs> is being a resident sceptic, which is usually something reserved for beans. What do you think, Lek? Well, I mean, I think it's possible that they could have redressed his room, but if you look at the wooden paneling in the back, the paneling in his room is the same as the Featherington... I'm uh, sorry, <laughs> not the Featherington, not yet. <laughs> the Bridgerton drawing room <laughs> so it's blue with like these white kind of rectangular squares on moldings. it mm. yeah rectangular molding and in this one it's blue with yellow molding and it's more of a square shape than a rectangle but mm-hmm. i think it's definitely mm-hmm. possible that it could be colin's bedroom because if you look at the wall color and compare it to mm-hmm. the photos of the two boom mics which we believe is colin's room it is a similar color to the wall there so it could be colin's room so <laughs> listeners if you don't know we've covered this before but the set of the Bridgerton drawing room in season one they they basically just redress that set for Colin's mm-hmm. bedroom so the actual like skeleton of it is the same so mm-hmm. there are similarities when you look at them but I think you can see the pillar just by Colin there that is the pillar that you find in the Bridgerton drawing room I don't think this is the Bridgerton drawing room because they definitely don't have that kind of like dark heavy furniture and they definitely mm-hmm. wouldn't have that red carpet Carpet. so i think Mm. it's his bedroom i am so on board this i will back that but if it is his bedroom then they redressed it for his season which makes sense because they may be shooting some scenes in there there's a whole well there's a whole other side of the room (laughs) to have a look at we've not been to the whole thing but if it is his bedroom i have a theory i have a theory so last episode do you remember or an episode i don't remember which we were talking about Chekhov's gun Mm-hmm. right and that shawl yeah. that was in the shot of the scene where I was like it might come back in some way because it, it seemed too deliberate so the end of that clip was them hearing Eloise and Francesca walking towards them right and Colin sort of startled towards the door mm-hmm. I wonder if what's going to happen is that they're going to be like, shit, we're about to get caught, right? So he like hustles her the fuck mm-hmm. out of the room as quick as they can. Mm-hmm. And he's like, I'll just take you to my bedroom because I don't know where else to put you. Like, <laughs> I'll just like take you out the other way. He like drags her upstairs to his bedroom, just like puts her in there. Mm-hmm. And she's like, oh my God, I left my shawl downstairs in the drawing room. Yeah. And she's like, they're going to know I'm here. Like it's doomed. Because if she's ruined and has Marie Cole, that's her worst nightmare come to fruition. Mm-hmm. And she's like, I need my fucking shawl. And Colin's like, shit. And so he runs down to the drawing room to pick up her shawl and retrieve it. In the meantime, Penelope gets oh. a, sees a little interesting book open on his desk because he didn't <laughs> expect her to be in his room. So he didn't hide it. Yeah. She takes that moment to go read his journal, gets engrossed. He returns with her shawl. And that's the whole setup for this hand yeah. cutting scene. Oh my god. What are you thinking? Yeah. Surely he wouldn't take her to his bedroom though. I like it. Love it. I like it too. I also want to add if and this is adding on to my previous theory that the shawl would also give away mm-hmm. that she's Lady Whistle down to Colin. Mm-hmm. 
if he goes and he picks it up, that means that he's actually looking yeah. at it. So because he picked it up, he'll have a memory of it, which would then will like That's a good point. probably smell in it. You know, cause this sort of snowball effect mm-hmm. eventually. Yeah. yeah. I guess my only uh, part where I might disagree is I I think he would be concerned about them being caught alone together, but I think Penelope would be more concerned about Eloise catching her there, especially after whatever yeah. confrontation they have at the at the Modis shop. Yeah. That That's she's not supposed to interact with the Bridgertons, or she you know, I never want to see you again was kind of the last thing we really heard from Eloise in season two. Yeah. So I feel like Penelope might be more panicked about that Mm. but still a reason to send him away to go get the shawl but we've got (laughs) Penelope lovingly tending to him I've always hoped that Pen would use his cravat to sadly wrap his wound now sadly this Colin is very very cravatted but if they're in his bedroom I'm just saying we know that boy has an unlimited supply of cravats so <gasps> what's stopping her from walking over to his laundry basket pulling out a cravat <laughs> jobs are good in well because where's where is this bandage mm. coming from it's probably just his handkerchief isn't it looking at yeah. it yeah <sighs> although if it's his handkerchief she has to reach into his pocket which it's quite fabricy though it's definitely not a bandage maybe because that's what she had to do in the book she had to like slip her hand into his chest pocket which is still quite an intimate oh. moment intimate is quite an interesting word because when julia quinn was talking about this moment in the book she described this as the first true moment of intimacy mm-hmm. and mm. i mean his 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 expression is very interesting i don't know if he's angry i think he's feeling quite vulnerable it's certainly maybe not that quirky romantic idea that we were wondering and i'm wondering if this is the breakthrough moment where we see his swagger and cockiness fracture and this oh, is a moment maybe. where we see a little bit more of the real Colin and yeah. mm-hmm. Kat Quinn interviewed Nick and Luke on the red carpet and um, she asked them about this scene um, and Luke inferred that there is a lot of steaminess in their first two episodes mm-hmm. and they, he said that they get straight into it and some people mm-hmm. have thought that maybe that means that this scene becomes steamy. I don't think so though. I think it'll be a later scene in this episode no. right before that moonlight uh, pollen moment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This is one of those moments, as Oz was speaking, I was getting, like, Regency butterflies. You know, like, you watch, like, a Regency (laughs) show and there's, like, tension there. I don't know if anybody gets this, but I get, like, a prickly feeling all up my body because you're like, oh, hell yeah, (laughs) they are into each other. This is that moment. This is a call and, like, ding, 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 there's a light bulb going off. What are these feelings? So sudden and new. Jonathan Bailey. Out on Thanksgiving. Um, And it's it's like, if you think she's just prepped him up for this moment accidentally by, they've just had that moment in the drawing room where she's, like, said that to him by his eyes. And it's clearly, like, uh, hit him directly. And so he was feeling vulnerable already without her hand delicately, lovingly patching him back up. Yeah. And Lecky, poor Lecky is so scared me that she's taken to holding her hand up because I'm so okay. fierce everyone. I'm sure we'll get to the clip later but in the clip mm-hmm. Colin mentions that he he wrote to Penelope and she didn't mm-hmm. write back and I wonder mm-hmm. if this scene her discovering his journals he's yeah. also thinking about that and how much he missed hearing her you know opinions of his writing mm-hmm. I feel like he turns to journaling because she doesn't answer his, his letters mm-hmm. is what yeah. I've mentioned before mm-hmm. so I feel like he's kind of making that connection here that he's longed so much for her to actually respond to his words and though he was kind of angry about it in the Mm. moment there might be kind of like a relief there that he's finally getting a reaction to the words he put down on paper because all along he just wanted her to read them oh my goodness and also a little bit of bashfulness because he's like this is my writing (laughs) yeah well this is thing so in the books he feels very exposed by her reading his words because no one's ever seen it in the show she obviously has familiarity with his writing but to (laughs) quickly jump to the clip Lecky what he says was and he's being a cocky little shit isn't he in the the clip we'll talk about it in a bit but what he says I wrote to you this summer as I always do you did not respond admittedly very few did and he says it in such a cocky way but I think that's he's writing and writing and no one has cared no that broke my heart when I heard it and Eloise dismissed him in season two continually and as a writer that would make you yeah. heavily doubt your own yeah. your own skills and for someone like Penelope who was such a support system to him in encouraging him to follow his dreams and then for him to mm-hmm. lose that mm-hmm. and then for her to stumble upon his words and to then read them and like you say Lucky if he's turned to journaling as a way to channel his emotions about it mm-hmm. channel his interiority instead of this external swagger that's you know like nothing can phase him he's the coolest thing mm-hmm. I'm fucking around whereas his journal is a place where that vulnerability kind of ricochets through mm-hmm but for Penn to read that is probably more exposing than it even was in the books because of their shared yeah. history. Mm-hmm. He's such a middle child. I love it. 
Oh my god. I when I see I'm a middle child, so I've had this affliction well. I haven't written love letters to anybody except for Tuba Boy, but I wrote those in my journal so he'd never <laughs> see them. But one time I wrote a story about like a wizard and <laughs> I gave it to my mom to read and I found it under a pile of mail and she never oh. read it. And so I was like, Oh, this must be bad. Oh. So I just I just took it back and she she never asked about it ever oh, again. Because she forgot about it. I would read your story beans. <laughs> oh my god, my dad was like the opposite. I wrote this story that I still have. I wrote it and my dad like got it. He just gets some funny ideas though. And he like stormed into the school to speak to my teacher. I was ten and he was like, oh, Have you read this? And he was like, I want to send it to the BBC to get it made into a TV show. He was like, it's so good. And I was like, Dad, this is mortifying. It's like not good writing at all. Adorable. That's so sweet. It's better than it being under a stack of mail. (laughs) Forgotten. (laughs) But all that to say, as a middle child, you often feel left out and pushed aside. (laughs) And like, when you want to be um, validated for your writing, you seek it out and anybody who will give you that validation. And now Colin doesn't have it. And so he's probably sadder than he lets on. And whose fault is that, Veg? Whose fault? His. (laughs) <laughs> okay, so we will have so much conversation about this still another day because it's a great one. But skipping along, episode two. Fuck, we know fucking loads about episode two at this rate. Or we think we do. Mm-hmm. We probably don't. Yep. I still have no idea. It's too much. It's going to be a good one. So we have the Bridgertons arriving at Osterley. And Lecky, how do we know this is Osterley? Because of Colin's outfit. And also the gravel mm-hmm. on the, the in the background is very distinctive. Mm-hmm. We kind of recognized it from the, the exterior of Osterley. And also the hairstyles that are worn by Eloise and uh, by Violet all match the season three filming commencement video. Mm-hmm. Yep. So this is definitely the family. And they do walk up the stairs to Osterley arriving. Mm-hmm. I think Colin's expression is really funny. I wonder if they are riffing on the same idea in the book where I wonder if the hand cut scene ends awkwardly or with a conflict mm-hmm. as it does in the book. Mm-hmm. And what mm-hmm. he does in the book, he goes to the Smith Smith musical to make it up to her. Yeah. And I, he kind of looks slightly sheepish as he's walking up. So I wonder if he's going with the same intention of making Maybe. it up to her at the ball. Is that the same carriage from the um, commencement video as well? No, there's, well, so this is the black carriage that is usually used by the Viscount. Now, Anthony okay. isn't there and neither is Kate, which is interesting. Mm. Pregnant. Well, <laughs> you know what? We ha- don't have time to get into the Kate and Anthony at all because we know yeah. that everyone's thinking about that too. Yeah. But we have thoughts. Do not fear. We have thoughts. But I know we're a pulling podcast and we like Colin and everything. But Beans, who's the real star of this still? Eloise. And I was going to say... Ice Queen. Mm -hmm. Ice Queen. Okay, first of all, I mean... Veg will give us more on the fashion rapport later. She's compiling the threads. But hands down, out of the whole Bridgerton franchise, this is my favorite dress. It's beautiful. The applique is fucking beautiful. I'm not going to go too much into it. But also, I was going to add... He could be sheepish because of what ended with him and Penn, but also maybe he broached Eloise mm. about mm. Penn and they got into an argument and he took a step back because she's she, she's giving face, you know, mm. like ice, ice baby. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, Beans, that's a really interesting point because the host, Gina Moore, asked Claudia about Eloise being protective over Colin. Mm-hmm. And Claudia mentioned, she, she talked about the Bridgerton bond and how they were there for each other and such. And what I was so interesting was that she said, that she and Luke Newton had so many scenes together. Mm. They spent a lot of time and Luke said that there was almost a triangle going on in the season between the three of them. Interesting. And then Claudia joked that Eloise was the ultimate third wheel. So I think that was a very deliberate prompt that the host asked about the protective um, nature that Eloise is going to have. Because on the one hand, it's her big brother who always always annoys her and he always frustrates her and they have a very banterless relationship. But whether we're going to see this really protective side of Eloise coming out Mm -hmm. as she watches Colin get closer to someone who's betrayed her equally against the fact that deep down she still absolutely adores Penelope Mm -hmm. but there's a little nugget that was interesting yeah um and Lecky you described her as the ice queen Mm -hmm. now her expression in this is absolutely incredible yeah how are we thinking about it Penn is committed to finding a suitor Eloise from what we've learned in today's live stream is committed Mm -hmm. to a new lifestyle of her own kind of becoming part of the ton against her will even though it makes Mm -hmm. her miserable it seems like yeah um, Mm -hmm. Gina Moore said that Eloise has decided to embrace some of the traditions and Claudia said that it goes against every part of her nature she did say that she's going to do it in Eloise's way and it's going to be quite funny in a way so it's not going to be just this very serious tone but Claudia said I think we see her sort of stiffen slightly in her approach yeah and I think that's really interesting and I think it's very truthful 
too because what happened with Penelope was described by Claudia as the real first big heartbreak Mm -hmm. that really cut Eloise open and I think we've all had those moments where Mm -hmm. something so foundational happens to you as the way you react to it is you're like fine I'll be the exact opposite of who I've been in retaliation as you're trying to cope with it yeah and I think you can see in her expression that she's kind of like dead behind the eye it's so so well done because she's storming ahead in front of everyone else like Francesca's all the way in the back even though she's you know possibly the diamond or the new Bridgerton on the market yeah Eloise is committedly walking through Mm. very steely but I think there's something in her that's just that isn't Eloise to a point one of the things I was thinking about is I wonder if Eloise really did take what Penn said to heart Mm. so listeners I watched all of season two did you do it accidentally (laughs) yep completely accidentally more than I actually watched it when we did the (laughs) rewatch I believe that at the end Penn says at least I did something you're always talking about doing something and I actually did and that makes you mad or whatever I'm wondering if Eloise realizes in order to make a change she has to play the game like she's taking what Penn said to heart because she's like okay if I'm gonna make these like women like realize my side of the stuff I have to play with it and be quirky and smart in a different Mm, way not so openly against the society yes so it would be interesting to see what she what she's gonna do it's gonna be a really interesting journey for Elle and I say we will come back to her yeah so if anyone's worried about the Debling Colin love triangle fear not you don't have to this is the real love triangle of the season according to the team (laughs) Since we're at Osterley, we're already here, aren't we? Uh, let's go see how the Queen is doing, because in one of the stills, we have the Queen with her entourage. Welcome back, Brimsley. We're all excited to see him again. Mm-hmm. Lecky, why do we believe that this is also at the same ball, the same lunar-themed ball that we've seen? Um, well, first of all, she has some star decorations mm. in her hair. And then also, you did some... Loves a theme. <laughs> you also did some digging, and you found the room they're in at Austerley. You know, Kate yeah. Rose, Sherlock Holmes, babe, slam down, we've got you for this one. Uh, it's at Osterley. <laughs> in conclusion which means that they also filmed inside our Osterley as well so it wasn't just the courtyard scene God. it's a beautiful beautiful house we'll share pictures I know but I'm just saying it's gonna be it's such a big season they really went all out this season yeah. it's crazy and they did talk about them wanting to deliver it and I think that's like a post-pandemic thing too yeah. because so much of season two was oh, for impacted sure. by it and yeah. the, the creators just wanted to in every department just wanted to go bigger and bigger yeah and I'm sure had we not had a pandemic season two oh, would yeah. have been even more gargantuan than than it was but dan they really put out all the stuff it's gonna be huge and the storylines are gonna be huge too yeah speaking of storylines in he walks my <laughs> word the way we scream uh. <laughs> so from this point onwards um we are no longer water barb a pollen podcast yeah veg we've rebranded we've rebranded you've led the way you're our brand manager who are we now you you three have rebranded i will hold up the ship i'll hold up the fort hey 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 i never said i was are you staying in the fort with me (laughs) yeah i'm staying in the fort with you okay cool we'll hold up the fort i love him i love him but i've never shipped them together yeah yeah yeah. veg what we now called (laughs) we are what a bug a pen limb podcast subheading colin can suck it as far as i'm concerned thank you very much for listening Penling, like Benedict Cumberbatch <laughs> attempting to say penguins. Penling. <laughs> Penguin. Okay, don't worry. We're not actually we're not actually shipping. It's gonna be hard though. I think it's gonna be hard. He just looks so sweet. I think it's the beard. He's affable. You know that I have no emotions. I nearly cried earlier because I was like We have predicted he was gonna be very sweet too. That's we I did, yeah. Yeah. Oh my god. You guys, I promise. I've said this three times today. I I have I did not oh write god. for Thank this show. Beans. I just looked into the context clues. <laughs> that was it. I didn't write the show. Because just to point out what Beans is referring to, twenty twenty two we had Devlin down as Pen Suter. Yeah. And also similar time a long, long time ago, as an insect we've man. been referring to Devlin as Bugling. Yeah. Because we were like, what could be mm-hmm. his weird like hobby that he yeah. has? Because that was in his thing. And I was like, I bet y'all he's going to collect butterflies. Like, it's going to be something that's like so pen-coded. Yeah. 
<laughs> here we are. Um, I will say that we kind of jumped on the the fact that he maybe pins butterflies and bees and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, not quite that. But once upon a time, we did <laughs> think that maybe he just really loved bugs and really loved mm-hmm. studying them. And yeah, didn't want to hurt them. <laughs> yeah. It just kind of like devolved into him collecting. It just evolved um, into him collecting bugs. We thought it'd be really uh, hilarious if he was like trying to protect insects from being like stomped on. But I, I like this idea that he's a conservationist because she wants her independence and she's a butterfly so he can both let her be free but also kind of offer her protection of marriage stop you're gonna make me switch sides which is is why he makes a good rival for colin okay so for the context that was the background that beans and all of us have made the prediction that bugling was canon and then in the summary for lord devling in the Shondaland article, Sam Phillips said that Lord Devlin's seen as an outsider. He lives on the fringes of society and he's after a love match this season. He's after mm-hmm. someone who goes against the grain, someone who's a little bit of an outsider like him. And he spots Penelope. He thinks she's special because she's sort of seen as an outsider too. Lord Devlin is interested in other things outside the norms of society. For instance, he loves wildlife. Bugling his cannon, guys. He's a conservationist. And he is a vegetarian. Vegetarian. Yeah, just, right. First of all, backtrack. The fact that Debling is even confirmed mm. is a huge fucking relief because I was getting stressed that we'd really got that wrong because we pinned a lot on that. Yeah. And also, finally, we've got a still of him. I've wanted a still of Debling for so long. But Nicola said that Penelope finds some suitors. One is very, very fond of her. And she's like, yeah, this could work. Luke Newton said, my biggest threat. So oh. he is the main the main suitor, as we thought. But what is so sad to me, and that's been like ruining my life all day, is that he's after a love match. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Sake. Poor guy. Which means he's 100% going to be in love with mm-hmm. Penn, which makes me really mm-hmm. upset. I love him as a character. I want, but I'm a Pollock supporter yeah. through and through. <laughs> but I am so happy she's going to have someone that's like, maybe like actually appreciates her so she oh. understands mm-hmm what it's like to be appreciated Mm -hmm. so she's like i don't want none of this fucking shit from you colin Mm -hmm. (laughs) to me it makes sense because he offers her what she wants but she doesn't necessarily she's not necessarily looking for love and she realizes eventually that it's with someone else but he offers her the independence he supports Mm -hmm. her interests he kind of likes that she's an outsider and Mm -hmm. he's a conservationist Mm -hmm. so he's going to allow her to be this butterfly that is roams free and is protected he's Mm -hmm. so sweet i'm gonna cry big tears for him (laughs) Big tears. If Penn doesn't want him, I'll take him. He's adorable. Think about it. Veg and yeah. the veggie. <laughs> Veg and the vegetarian. Vegling. What I will say there, Lecky, about this idea of, you know, he's seen as an outsider. He sports Penn, sees her as like a kindred spirit as an outsider and is this kind of conservationist. It's very, very sweet. And it's almost like, yes, that is kind of almost the right thing. But then the other side of it is, and I say that with all the affection for him in the world, is does she need to stay as an outsider or is her story that she needs to move from the outside into the center into the light and it, mm. and like she'd still find some sort of nice life with him but is that ultimately what we're all after in life a safe option or is it someone who challenges us and pushes us and not just contains us in a safe space but allows us to go free and then you find that freedom with yourself it is interesting because all this talk about being wallflowers and outsiders they're not actually invisible are they they're very hmm. well known in the ton they're just not known the way that they want to be and that's yeah. very very much true for Penn. I think it's true for Colin too. He's, yeah. he's seen as just charming and empty headed. Certainly in the book. Her story has been so much written by how the Ton has defined her. And I think the mm-hmm. same thing goes for Debling. And I think mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. Debling is going to be different for them, but from both of them because he has fully accepted who he is as himself. Mm-hmm. He's okay with being an outsider. He's okay with the hobbies that he enjoys. Mm-hmm. And I mm-hmm. think that's going to be a really good lesson for both Colin and Penn. And mm-hmm. it's going to be a good lesson for Colin And he's going to be so upset about it because it's coming from bugling. I also think it plays into them realizing that they are both imperfect people, but they love each other in spite of their flaws because Debling is kind of perfect on paper, kind of like the prince in season one. Mm -hmm. But this love that she has with Colin surpasses that is more important. That's such a good point that both of you just made because 
when I think it's, I know people, some people are frustrated by there being another suitor. Mm. I do think it's important for Penn and crucially for Colin that she has another legitimate option mm, yeah. because yeah. I don't think it does either of them any good to even have the slight notion of, well, I'm with you by some sort of default. Like, mm. I think they need to both choose each other. And I think that's important for Penn to choose Colin for both of them. And Beans, you were saying about Colin learning from this as well. And I've always seen doubling as almost like a manifestation of Colin's insecurities. Because if you look at it, he's older, which is something that Colin's always tried to act. He's always tried to establish himself as like a grown man. Mm. He's titled, Colin's a third son. He has a purpose. He has interest. I mean, we saw how much he fawned over, he's a nerd, as Nicola said later. Mm. They're both nerds. We Mm. saw that when he went to Romney Hall and saw Sir Philip with his interest, that he really connected with that and was inspired by that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then you have Doubling, who, no matter how quirky his interest, he has interest, he has direction, he has purpose, saving little baby animals from being eaten by terrible meat eaters. I'm a meat eater, no offence, guys. (laughs) And you said it before, Beans, he's really fucking nice. And he's handsome. And the other thing that I think you touched on, Beans, is that you're going to have a character who's going to walk into the ton and instantly see Penelope Mm -hmm. and possibly instantly fall for her or at least Mm -hmm. fall for her on a much faster trajectory Mm -hmm. whereas you have Colin who has spent years stumbling around in the dark stumbling towards Penn making mistakes taking time to get there you know tick tock the clock but I think what Colin needs to learn is that he is enough as all he is he's enough as a third son he's enough that he doesn't know who he is and he's figuring out it's enough that he's young and still finding his way in the world yeah and i think that he also needs to learn that with his journey with Penn, because i think about the scene in the books where they're together on the engagement night and and colin starts to apologize and he's like i regret how long it's take i regret that it took me so long to see you and penelope's like no regrets like we are where we are and i think that colin needs to learn that even though this person has come in and instantly seen her and instantly made that move towards it, that even though it's taken him time to get there, it doesn't mean he's unworthy and it doesn't mean that their journey is any less and that, you know, he's enough and their story is enough. That also isn't to say that Debling's not going to project some type of idea onto Penn, you know? <laughs> mm-hmm. He may mm-hmm. fall for her at first sight, but he also may like this idea that he's built up of Penn and not be yeah. ready for that. But also he might just be a perfect gentleman and love her no matter what. I just mm-hmm. think it's really important for Debling specifically, and it sounds from what Sam Phillips was saying, that he's confident. And it's it's important for these two characters, at least, to see that confidence mm-hmm. without the pressure of the ton. I do think it's funny that he's a vegetarian, because that's like the funniest thing that Colin is like the most committed in me. <laughs> That's gonna be uh, that's gonna be a great comedy bit. That's gonna be a great comedy bit. Yeah, I bet. Maybe Debling is also kind of a wallflower in his own way, where he's comfortable yeah. staying on the outskirts yeah. of social situations and balls. Whereas mm. Colin, while appreciating Penelope's barbs on the side of that the dance floor, also wants to pull her into the spotlight and will pull her onto the dance floor yeah. into view of the rest of society. Into the light. Because Debling sounds like I, I think we all had people in our lives that have been the safe option or situations in life where there's been a safe option and mm-hmm. it's like you could have a perfectly content secure life mm-hmm. and and that's what she could have with Debling. it's almost like come here and be a wallflower with me and we'll be safe and you can be that but it's does a character like penelope need to be challenged as a person uh, as a romantic partner and is that something she's going to find and it's that kind of choice that you have to make between the safety of knowing that your heart might never be fully 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 fulfilled mm-hmm. but it's safer and it's protected and bubble wrap or do you risk it all knowing that it could devastate you, but it'll be worth it in the end. Mm -hmm. And a couple of outfit points that we will definitely go into more later. So Penn is in a gorgeous blue dress and it's it's Bridgerton blue and she's wearing Mm. it while she's talking to someone else. So in a previous episode, Lecky's had a theory that Penn will sort of wear Colin's colour as she gets closer to Devlin. And it looks like that's what's going on here. She's wearing Bridgerton blue. She's also got bows in her hair, which we know that... How many? (laughs) traumatizing i know the bows are not pen's friend but to have this is almost like a parallel and i won't go too into it but this is almost like a parallel to that scene in 202 so not to get super deep into it but the fact that she's wearing bows and she's with like a viable suitor it makes me clown that this is like almost the opposite of the you do not count scene and i did say in our chat i said this portia is how you do bows with an outfit (laughs) because those are lovely subtle beautiful bows because they're almost like framed in a similar way right in how they're shot that um, yeah. yeah exactly instead of calling like not seeing her and saying something so accidentally hurtful this is a moment where 
Deblings connecting more. Yeah. And like you talked before about how if Penn is wearing very Bridget and blue, as, as Colin's brain has clicked into wife mode, mm-hmm. it's going to drive him insane to see yeah. her yeah. with someone else. But how is Debling looking? Debling is looking very dapper. Oh, we love him. He has got a golden waistcoat. Where have we seen mm-hmm. those before? And he is very cravatted. Again, <laughs> where have we seen that before? He is just, it has Colin vibes. Colin. Ken has a type. Colin. And it's cute and it makes it harder. Yeah. Well, I just like the idea that they're standing together, but they're looking at representations of Pollen. So Penn is looking at this guy who's dressed like Colin, and he's looking at this woman who looks like she's a Bridgerton. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I have a question for you guys. I am the host now. <laughs> Go for it. Are we going to see Dubling and Penn dance together? We fucking better. Yeah. Yes, I think 100%. Because sure. I'll tell you for why. Dancing is Pollen's thing. Yeah. It's something that's always connected them. And I think if she refuses to dance with him, I think Colin will interrupt to dance with them both. That's what well, my next question mm. was going to be. Do we think that Colin is going to see this happen? And how is he going to react? Um, Ugh, I'm a great host. <laughs> I think he's going to lose his fucking mind. I know. To interrupt, mm-hmm. Adjua was interviewed on the red carpet and she was asked if Lady Danbury and Penelope would become friends in season three. And she said they would. Oh! Oh, that's oh, one I God. that's what I hoped for, but I didn't think it was gonna happen. Oh, I'm so excited to hear that. That is amazing. And this is the thing, we're gonna have like loads of crumbs coming out in the next few days and we're gonna sweep them all up in our little brushes with Yeah, which is why we're gonna do a bigger episode over the weekend. We're trying to zoom, zoom, zoom. <laughs> Just to finish up the topic of Debling and Penn in this still, what do you think about, I mean, Debling's expression, he looks very lovely, very amiable, but what do you think about Penn's expression here? I don't know. I'm just excited about it. It's just how I am. Oh my God. I've just had a terrible thought. What if this is some kind of like twisted what a barb scene? Oh no. God, maybe. No. And they're on the side making a quip about something that would be so sad she doesn't look like she's making a quip i'm wondering if maybe they're talking and then colin does something to like embarrass himself like he sees them gets jealous and like trips or Mm. something you know he like loses his cool uh i I wonder if it would be something like that and they're both like looking up well it's like like you said you think they're looking at another couple could it be that like do you like when you you get on with someone but you like your chemistry is slightly mismatched like Mm. maybe they're like having a moment not having a moment but like maybe they're talking and it isn't like hitting the same way for Penn as it would with Colin. Yeah, maybe. I will say the person in the reflection, I don't think that's Colin. I think that's somebody else. No. Um, but we no, also yeah. can't discount the fact that there could be somebody else standing next to that person. There could be more than one person there. But before we move on, I just wanted to say we all had an opinion about who Dublin looks like. And it was, it, <laughs> he looks kind of like a young Santa Claus. Like a young hot Santa. So you're welcome. Also to dive into maybe a crack theory, maybe there's a big picture of like an animal across the hallway and he's like oh that's an animal that is in the wild here's some more information about it and then like goes back to love or some shit i want him to like tell a lovely story about the spring lambs that he saved from you know uh, orphan spring lambs and i want colin to walk past like munching on a lamb chop (laughs) (laughs) but just to close off this section i think there's something so sad in pen's eyes and mm-hmm. it's just like the tiniest moment, but I just don't think her heart's fully in it. I don't know. I think she's just nervous. I feel like she's going to be kind of like excited by this attention. You know, there's always a part of us and it's I, maybe not everybody does this, but, you know, we like attention. And sometimes we get into relationships because we are just given the attention that we haven't had before. So mm-hmm. it might not necessarily be a good relationship, but it's because they're giving us maybe attention we didn't have in a previous relationship. Mm-hmm. And so we've never mm-hmm. experienced it or we've never had attention dating especially when you're younger is so exciting and all over the fucking place but you just dive mm-hmm. head first because it's the first time you're having all of these emotions and no you just may have like lust rather than love or I don't think she lusts after Debling, I'll be honest. But, you know, it might. she might think she feels that love when re- in reality she feels more of a friendship with this person. I wonder if it's a case as well of she spent years of with Colin being all over the place and not having not knowing how yeah. he felt. And he's only going to get more and more chaotic in these episodes, in these early episodes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. And I wonder if it's the thing of just like, at least she knows where she stands with this person. Right, yes. Because Nick said that at a point she's like, maybe this can work because it's like maybe it's just easier sometimes at least this ground i'm on is actually solid i was going to say that 
depending on what is happening between Pollen in this episode 303, there might be some anxiety mm-hmm. depending on what Colin is doing to interfere or not interfere with this relationship, especially with the mm. that confrontation they had at the end of the previous episode. Yeah. And it's that inner turmoil for Penn of she knows deep down that she is always going to love Colin. Yeah. yeah. But her head, and she is like, she's funny as Penn because she, she has dual personality naturally, but she's someone who is so romantic, but then has the ability to override that with her head and be logical yeah. in a way that I don't think Colin has always been. I don't think Colin's very able to cut himself off and make logical, cold decisions. Mm-hmm. And I think that's the side that we're going to see warring of Penn, of Penn the romantic, who's been in love with this person her whole life, even though it's her and it's been a risk. Yeah. Versus logical Penn. Penn the practical. Belated Christmas gift. Thank you, Santa Claus. No, I feel like we've talked about Devlin so much. Let's go see how our boy is doing. Episode six, we've got Colin and Ben at Will's bar. Pure speculation on our part, but I think we all think this is the bachelor party, perhaps? The bachelor party for whom? Better be for bloody Colin, that's all I'm saying. Oh, I said Devlin. It would, it would tie in because... <laughs> Getting the bin. <laughs> Coming soon to uh, What a Bug Know You. Because if episode seven is joining of hands, mm-hmm. yeah. Note that there are four glasses and we can see Will reflected in the mirror. Yeah. But it means yeah. that someone else is there. Do we think Anthony is just lurking up shop? Probably. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. But Colin's expression in this is just gorgeous. He looks radiant. So happy. Do you know what? I love Colin's expression in this so much. And I do have a soft spot for Colin at Bachelor Pie Drinks because I love him in 206. Mm-hmm. But there's something in his expression here where I'm like, that's my Colin. That's him. Mm-hmm. But Veg, how is he looking? Oh, his neck is well and truly free. Free the neck campaigners. You've done it. Thank the Lord. Good job, guys. They've got similar... This does really give the vibes of Anthony's bachelor party because it looks like they're kind of in similar outfits, him and um, mm-hmm. Benedict. They've got the floaty arms, which they had in that scene before. And, and yeah, the kind of waistcoat is nice, but there's no cravat. He looks relaxed. Is it golden? I think that's a golden waist. I think that's a yellowy golden waistcoat. Yeah, it is golden. So it might not be the bachelor party, but we kind of think that Will's hosting it. He's closed. I think it is. It's 3.06. And just to clarify, we think that, the, well, we know the wedding takes place in block four, which is episodes yeah. seven or eight. So it kind of makes mm-hmm. sense for maybe episode 306 and a scene mm-hmm. like this to maybe be the bachelor party. It looks like one anyway. And I think this is him like really thinking like everything's going well. I think if there is going to be like a big drop at the end of episode six, as often is, I don't think it's hit. And I think he's like, all is going well. I'm going to be with Penn. And Lecky, I know you've long had a theory. You you want him to sneak out this bachelor party. Where would you want him to go? I do. Do it, Colin. <laughs> She's calling your name. Go climb up that tree. And in terms of the Ben and Colin relationship, Luke said something interesting. He says that I feel like I spent nowhere near as much time with Luke Thompson as I'd like just because of the way our storylines have gone. We haven't shot anything together in a oh. while. So does that mean that they're not going to have this super close bond and or maybe not going to have screen time together? I guess not. Interesting. This plays into what Luke Thompson said at the event mm. where he said that he was kind of taking over some responsibilities for Antony, probably because yeah. Kate is pregnant. But so I wonder if maybe Benedict is kind of sidetracked by that and maybe his entanglement yeah. with Lady Tilly, if that actually happens. And mm-hmm. so he doesn't really have as much time for Colin as we would initially thought. Which would be funny because like, he probably needs Ben to push him on the direction a little bit. So if Ben's too busy. Right. He needs that. Well, what he needs is like artistic Ben, you know, romantic, poetry, mm. artistic Ben. And that's not the Ben that's going to be there for him, mm. which uh, makes me feel like a little bit stronger in my theory that Antony's going to be more aloof and lovey-dovey and may... Yeah be more hopeful to call in on the loving side than Ben is. Mm -hmm. It's so interesting. I think that they are going to have moments that are important because clearly they're on screen together. But I think that it's going to be just a little bit different than what we anticipated. Yeah, it's so odd. I wonder if maybe it will be Fran also that who steps into that role. But then also what we got from Claudia earlier, it seems like Eloise is spending so much time with Colin this season. Yeah, which makes me wonder... If Eloise and Colin are going to get closer because of this, and then maybe Fran gets closer with Ben because Ben maybe is dealing with all the wedding stuff. Yeah. Chaperoning. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Interesting, interesting. Now, for sure, we're going to return to Ben later, but... 
this big moment would even be Bridgerton if there hadn't been an accidental leak of some kind. Now, listeners, as you will know, at the very end of the live stream, we had uh, like, it's like a 90 second, two minute long clip. It was a bit confusing because I said it was the first two minutes of the season. So I thought we were all expecting to see like the return. And then I think they mean it's the first glimpse that we have seen of the season. Very confusing. Yes. Yeah. And it wasn't two minutes. It was one minute <laughs> and 20 seconds. Uh, it's one minute and two seconds if you're counting because the end is the, the ad. Yeah. <laughs> That's the 21st of their current running screen time total. So, you know, we're racking <laughs> yeah. up the numbers here. <laughs> <laughs> so, obviously, this clip got released at the end and it's all available all over social media and everything like that. But before the live stream even began, when I was running down the stairs trying to log on apparently a still of this clip first of all was released before the live stream and that Mm -hmm. caused people to freak out but we did see the whole clip during the live stream but lucky 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 what else happened with this clip after the event? So we got another leak right after <laughs> the live stream. Mm. I don't know if Netflix Netherlands intended to release this portion of the clip, but they included like another line of dialogue at the beginning. And of longing glance. Yes, <laughs> where basically Colin compliments her dress and he says, yes. I'm quite serious, the color rather suits you, which suggests mm-hmm. that he gives her a compliment when he approaches her before the scene begins. Good night, Mr. Bridgerton. <laughs> So when she turns to him and says that to him, mm-hmm. it's like, that's the prompt for why she's like, fuck off. Yep. And so we would encourage you, if you haven't seen this, like we'll include it in the show notes, but please go and look at this slightly longer clip because it doesn't change the scene, but it really adds like a crucial component to the scene mm-hmm. that you don't get without it. Yeah. So go see it. Well, Beans, first of all, Beans, first of all, where are we? Oh, boy, oh boy. <laughs> Sorry, Biscuit. <laughs> <laughs> we are at Lady Danbury's house. Okay, mm-hmm. I know that like he was like we're not she's going to be unhappy to be like, "Oh, I recognize that. I recognize that." I was excited when I saw this. I was like, I was excited too. We fu- I told you, girl, we fucking saw them <laughs> filming this. Well, we didn't see them filming this scene, but like they were in Bath. This is filmed in so these were the pickups that were filmed in mm-hmm. block 4 in mm-hmm. January of last year, if I'm correct. Yep. Mm-hmm. And they were filming at the Holborn Museum in Bath, which is where Lady Danbury, mm-hmm. the front of Lan- Lady Danbury's estate is filmed. And they filmed outside and downstairs and in the courtyard in the courtyard (laughs) this is what gags me every time people were taking pictures of them filming at night well we couldn't see because they put a huge wall up but we now realize that they were filming that scene i know and people were just (sighs) walking by casually (laughs) (laughs) oh gosh i would be like screaming (laughs) no i wouldn't i'd be respectful but inside i'd be like oh (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so the context of this scene is that Penn is outside near her carriage. Apparently she's about to head off alone. Veg will do a full outfit breakdown at the weekend, but she's notably in which colour? Green. Emerald green. Which is exactly what Colin notes in the extended clip. He says, as you said, I'm quite serious, the colour rather suits you. Ooh, like a girl in emerald green, do we? Hmm. <laughs> Maybe those uh, thoughts should start connecting up pretty soon, my love. But And so what we have is what we've often been musing over, the initial confrontation between Penn and Colin, where not only does she give him a cold shoulder, but she breaks and reveals that she heard what he said. Mm-hmm. And so he's trying to, like, charm her. And it's just completely rubbing her up the wrong way. And I think we see a lot of anger and a lot of hurt and a lot of upset from Penn. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I was just going to say regarding the color thing, I just realized that the next day in episode 302 at the market scene, Penelope wears like an emerald green necklace. And I wonder Mm. if she picks that out for a reason. Sorry. Aw. Like the next episode. Yeah. Yeah. So they have this conversation, well, more of a confrontation, where, you know, Penn's very angry, saying, you know, she's a spinster, she doesn't have options. And Colin, you know, he doesn't help us sometimes, does he? You know, like, we're here Mm. with a podcast for him. And, like, we're always like, oh, he's really perceptive, we promise. And you know what? You can't say that he isn't perceptive because he manages to figure out, he goes, is something wrong, Penn, between Mm. us, I mean? (laughs) Perceptive. You can't say that. Bless his soul. He reads the signs. And they have this confrontation that doesn't end well. You've all watched it. You've all seen it. We will break it down more. A few things that jumped out straight away. First of all, Mr. Bridgerton is confirmed. Everyone was worried about that. Mr. Bridgerton, we all lost our minds. We all, we were so excited. I know Veg loved that moment. (laughs) (laughs) Lucky, the letters he fully wrote to her 
confirmed the letters back. Okay, well, he basically, when he's talking about how he wrote to her and she didn't write him back, he says, admittedly, very few did, but if you're going to make me say it out loud, I miss you. But he says, say it out loud. Does that mean mm. you wrote down those words, Colin? Did you write in your letters that you <laughs> missed her? Oh my God, that killed me. I've thought about that all day. Sorry, thank you. But we have the letters confirmed. As we thought, she didn't reply and he kept writing to her. How are we feeling about Colin's attitude in this? Because this is the first time we've seen this cockiness. So Veg just threw her hand up in the <laughs> air. You've never seen a move so quick because this is the first time we've seen his cockiness and swagger kick in. He's absolutely full of himself. He tries to use it on her. Like even then, but like, oh, you like the whole attitude. He's trying to be like suave and charming. And it just hits flirty and it just completely falls flat. Veg, yeah. how did you feel watching this, Colin? He's not your favourite, is he? Right. No, he's fine. But it's like, yeah, it's what you said. It's the swagger. He's coming in and he's even still brushing off. She hasn't replied to his letters, but it's only now dawning on him that something might be up. But he mm -hmm. goes in and he starts off with that compliment at the start and he then says like oh you know he's he's flirting with her basically and like he's doing mm -hmm. it in a casual way that he's always done with her and he's always been able mm -hmm. to get away with this lack of propriety but she's not letting him get away with it anymore and like yeah. there's no reason you know he's it's harmless in his perspective sure to defend him but it, it is can still harmful to pen and she is not sticking up for it now mm -hmm. and i love it and it's just i think what struck me about this clip and his attitude is when she mentions and i'm jumping ahead a tiny bit when she mentions okay. that she heard what he said and saying like you would or before even that when she says you would never court me he sort of looks almost confused like he's surprised that she's mm. asking that i don't think he's there yet with her i think you know there's some initial attraction but he i think that he may have said like oh pen i'm you know i'm not you know we're just friends or something like that and i just oh he's really taken aback it's what jess brownell the showrunner has said that he literally takes a step back penelope surprises him because yeah, yeah because she pushes back and he's never seen that side of her mm -hmm. i was going to say when we first saw the pickups in bath and the shot of penelope exiting her carriage and looking up at the featherington house she looked so happy and confident and like she had a plan and we mm -hmm. all thought mm -hmm. that maybe by that point she had kind of accepted that you know, her relationship with Colin would never be, but she would be at peace with it. Or trying to tell herself she was at peace with it. And this clip very much changed her mind. She's, yeah, because the anger she displays here, I did not expect to see mm. from her when mm. they had this conversation. To touch on the anger though, and you know, he is being, I think he he isn't being his best self here, but well, he, I think he's trying something that's working on everyone else. Mm -hmm. You know, this cool kid, he's come back, he's probably the center of attention, he's charming, he can smooth over everything with these words, but it isn't authentic. I don't, I'm, I don't, I don't, I've never believed that the swagger thing is authentically himself. I think he is more confident, I believe that. But this side of him, I don't think is Colin. I think this is covering mm. up a lot for him as well. You see his vulnerability slightly slipping through when he talks about the fact that no one replied to him. When she mm. hits him a little bit, he staggers back. When those two members of the ton walk past and he looks, and Penelope is like, see, you, you embarrassed me. That's what it is. You embarrassed me. I think mm -hmm. Colin is a character who really, really cares what people think of him. Yeah. Because he's so in his own head about who he is and he doesn't know. So he's concerned about what people like Anthony think of him. He's concerned of what his friends did to him. It set him up so much for that mm -hmm. scene where he let Pen down. That, you know, you have that moment where when society intrudes on that moment between them, he mm -hmm. reacts to it visibly. And she stares straight at him in that and she like sees that happen. And I think this is a whole journey that he needs to go on because this isn't the going to end up in episode eight. So he's not going to be like this all the season. But in terms of Penn's anger, like you say, like I agree, she's far angrier than I thought she was going to be. But I wonder if, if we looked at the context of the scene, which we don't know too much about, but if this is at the end of the evening where she's been failing spectacularly. Yeah. And, and she, she came back with this plan. And mm -hmm. she's so frustrated because she tried to change her wardrobe. She tried to do these things and it hasn't worked. I wonder mm -hmm. if Colin in this instance is more like the cherry on top of the icing mm -hmm. in terms of he's the thing that's pushing her over the edge. And he's yeah. almost the one kind of copying for it. I think it's mm -hmm. justified that he cut, like, I think, you know, he, he needs to know what he did. But yeah. do you know that thing where, like, you're at breaking point, right? Yeah, yeah, the straw that broke the camel's back, yeah. But equally, I think it's also that moment of, I think, with the people you love the most 
and the people you know the most you have that ability to like show your like most vulnerable worst side sometimes do you know what I mean Mm -hmm. like it can kind of crack through and it almost bursts out of her and you can tell throughout the whole scene she's fighting to stay composed so I think this anger that she's feeling isn't necessarily just I'm so angry at you it's I'm so angry that I can't escape this life no matter how I try like no matter like what people think of me I can't escape my love for you I can't escape this confused these confusing messages so I think it's more of a build-up on her part Mm -hmm. for the whole thing but it's going to hit him a little bit and and maybe bring him down a peg or two yeah and then just to like quickly segue because what we're going to see we have this interaction and then in the very next episode we have the drawing room scene right where Mm -hmm. like it's completely different tone and she calls you know she says in this she she didn't think he'd be cruel and then in the next episode she's complimenting him on you know you your eyes shine the brightest when you're kind Mm -hmm. and that's like you know a big jump that they're gonna have so are these lessons gonna be a turning point where he starts the lessons like really cocky really sure of himself then penelope through being herself and through loving him and through her words completely disarms him like not literally like unless that hand wound is more serious than we thought but i mean in terms of she cuts through to like the true part of him that isn't Mm -hmm. the facade for society for society Mm -hmm. yeah just things to chew on over the weeks and uh in terms of nick and newts nicola said that this is a really good place for him to start and it's good for her to see him as a human being a lovely human being but human being nonetheless and that it's a level playing field so then we go from this this conflict isn't going to capture the entire narrative of the season it's going to just be the starting point Mm -hmm. any other points about the scene we will break it down way more at the weekend but any other thoughts thank you bridgerton gods Thank you, Richard and Gods. We were blessed. Woof woo! There's been tons more crumbs in that Shondland article, which will tear apart. We know that the press were there, so there's interviews with Cat Quinn. And oh, one thing that I will say is that Nicola mentioned, I think, to Cat Quinn, there's a scene in episode one where Penn decides to get a new wardrobe. Mm-hmm. And there's an actual scene where she's in her room and she's looking through her clothes and she sees the dress that she wore to her first ever ball. I think Nicola requested details like that to be added. So that's another scene we know from episode one where we're going to have Penn mm-hmm. in her room, really like looking at her past life and evaluating that on like a like an actual like seeing it in front of her before kind of choosing a different path for her yeah but guys again these are just our initial thoughts we'll have more to come but what are we thinking do you have any last thoughts about any of the clips any of the stills i'm excited we have a lot more to talk about and we will there's a lot of content and i'm scared yeah (laughs) are you scared of getting a season there's so she's like me there's so much i don't know what to do (laughs) yeah we need a couple of days to like sleep for a start Mm -hmm. process it I get yeah. back to you. Okay, last question for everyone then. What was everyone's favourite? It can be a favourite quote from the cast. It can be a favourite point. It can be a favourite still. What's been your favourite thing tangible that we've got from today? Oh, well, Prudank, obviously for me, I screamed. <laughs> I screamed my little heart out. My, like, throat hurt. Didn't expect that little gem, did you? The clip I watched several times. So good. Good night, Mr. Bridgerton. <laughs> so good. <laughs> <laughs> we need more Dickensian and pen in the future but for me it was the anecdote Nicola shared during the live stream where she said that uh, Adjua turned to her after they watched the first two episodes and said something like this is for the wallflowers like it made me mm. so emotional oh god mm-hmm. it's gonna be so good yeah oh <laughs> Adjua Ando's dress incredible it looks so good Golda's dresses they all looked unreal and wasn't nice to see the castle together Veg what was your favorite thing we've got from today I loved Penn's blue dress, honestly. And I loved Aww. Colin's expression in his scene. What about you, Ob? You know what? Like, I said I wanted that scene for ages, and it just kind of made me a bit sad. Um, <laughs> the lightly mean is us. And I was really hoping as well that we'd get the, the pirate clip, but we didn't. Um, controversially, I'm going to go the Debling picture, only because, and you can track this back through the podcast, I said for a really long time I just wanted to see Debling's costume. Yeah, you want to see his colour scheme. Yeah. And I think... Penn's expression is so interesting in that I think the confirmation of Debling is really exciting because that's something we've we've talked about so many times and Forever, if we'd been yeah. wrong it'd have been really fucking funny mm-hmm. and yeah so exciting thank you guys let us know what you guys think I know you're all absolutely losing your minds just as we are we'll be in touch in a few days give us a few days to do some chewing do some munching we're vegetarians now but do not worry we will go into more depth in another episode we will talk about canthony we will talk about things that they missed we mm-hmm. will discuss all of it so there were a lot of comments we held back yeah so mm-hmm. everything that you guys are thinking we will most likely address in our episode this weekend it's just very late <laughs> yeah it's just late and we need to edit this somehow yeah well kids what a day we survived valentine's day it was like the third to dumb in a way honestly 
it, yeah, it felt like our to doom finally. It really yeah, it felt did. like the real to doom. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, it did. It felt like we finally got what we have been missing for two years. <laughs> Triple to them was uh, third time's a charm, you know. Third season, yeah. mm-hmm. third daughter, third son. Well, kids, until then, Lecky, where can everyone find us as we continue to spiral into the abyss? You can find us at What a Barb Pod on Instagram and TikTok. And if you're watching us, us on YouTube, we are also a podcast. You can find us on podcast platforms. And if you're listening to us on podcast platforms, we are also on YouTube with lovely collages. I just put some chocolate in my mouth. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Beans, just favor. That's violin. Do 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 do. Do 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 do